How's it going? This is Ableton Certified Trainer Brian Funk, aka Afro DJ Mac, and I want to talk to you about Live 9.5 and the Simpler device. Simpler now allows you to use warp modes with your samples. That means that you can have pitched up and down samples without changing the timing of them. Now, the only drawback with Simpler is that you can only have one sample at a time. I want to show you a workaround you can use with instrument racks that will get you having more than one sample and really expand the power of the Simpler device. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've got this MIDI clip right here with samples from my Prophet 6 Analog Synthesizer by Dave Smith Instruments Sequential Circuits. And I've sampled it at many different octaves. You got some really low notes, stuff more in the mid range. And you'll hear there's some nice filter movement. It sweeps down. And I've got seven samples of it. So I wanna take this and drop it on a simpler. Now the cool thing about Simpler now is that we can use the warp modes. So as I drop this profit sample down here, we've got access to the warp modes, which means that the timing of all of the sample as I pitch it across the keys will stay the same. So all of my filter movements will be together. They won't change at different speeds like they normally would um, back on the old Simpler or in Sampler. So the first step that I wanna do here is find my first sample and I'm going to bring it in nice and tight like that and then go to the end of my sample and right about oops right about there should be fine so maybe just bring it back a little bit so we get the whole tail I'll turn on loop which is it's already on and I will just play around with the loop length a little bit and maybe we'll just kind of loop this portion of the sample I might fine tune this later now, right here is a pretty low note. Okay. Um, so as I play this up higher and higher, we can pitch it out. And the filter stays moving at the same speed as it would in the normal pitch because of the warp modes. Um, but now I can't really do anything with my other samples. So the trick I'm going to show you here is I'm going to group this simpler right-clicking, or Command-G is the shortcut, into an instrument rack. And I'm going to expose the chains of the instrument rack. And I'm going to start duplicating. I've got seven samples, so I'm going to duplicate this six times. So I have seven instrument racks right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're all the same. Um, and what I can do now is go into the key range. Right now, they're all gonna play back. It's gonna be pretty loud. They're all playing the same note at the same time. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the key range and I'm just gonna set up my keys so that I'm gonna set maybe a C0 for the first one. And then the next sample, we'll do it, yeah, we'll do it at B. And we'll start our samples out on C. And every octave, what I'm just gonna do here is set up a new key range and as I trigger the notes on my keyboard, I will play back different notes at different octaves. And what this will do is this will allow me to have many different simplers, all playing back one sample, but it'll play very fluidly like it was just one instrument thanks to our instrument racks. So let me move this here and this here. And now what I just need to do is go inside of my chains here. Maybe I'll just hide these for now so we don't have to look at those. And I'm just going to move the sample placeholder here. So I'll grab this guy and move him to about there and bring the beginning right to about there. And just get it nice and tight so we don't have any delay before the sample actually triggers. And I can play around with my loop um, movement as I fine-tune this instrument. But right now I'm just going to go through all of these and just move them as I did before. And maybe I'll just do a little fast forwarding on the video so you don't have to watch me do this over and over again. Okay, and we're back. So, um, something that you need to consider in doing this approach now is that Simpler will by default assume that your note is a C3. So I'm going to need to adjust the pitches of some of these samples because otherwise all of my notes are going to be playing back at C3 and it 
it's not going to work out. So I'm going to need to pitch down the first set. Now, if we look at C3, we go one, two, three. We're going to go down three octaves. Um, I got down here. I'm bringing it to three. Um, I'm finding this first sample I have here is kind of so low. I'm finding it kind of useless, so I'm actually going to delete it. And sometimes that's going to happen when you're sampling things. When it gets too low, sometimes you're better off just going with um, a different sample and bringing it down. So we've got our sample here, and you'll hear it's way too low. We, we don't even hear anything. So since I'm off of C3, I'm going to go down two octaves, or up two octaves, excuse me. 24. And that's our first key. Now if we go to the next key, again, it's too low. And that's playing it, I'm starting at C2, so I'm going to have to move this one now up another octave. So we'll put in 12 right here on the transpose. And now when I play this one, I get the notes I want. And now the relationship between these two simplers on the first chain and the second chain are proper. That's one, this is one octave right here. Now our next note is going to work out fine because it's on C3. So that sounds pretty good. Then we go up to our next note. It's too high. So what I'm going to have to do now on this particular note is drop it down an octave. So I'm going to go here and type in negative 12 and we should get, we get the proper note right there, which is perfect. Now as I move up the keyboard again, as you may have guessed, I'm going to have to do the same exact thing. So everything's good. That's much too high. So this one, we're going to bring down two octaves. That's going to be negative 24. And now it's the proper note. And we'll just go up here. And again, this one is much too high. <laughs> Sounds kind of cool like that. But we're going to bring that down negative 36, which is three octaves. And that sounds pretty good. And all my notes now across my keyboard are working out just right, just the way I want them. And you'll notice the filters all moving together since they are all warped properly. And um, that's pretty much how you do it. Um, so what I've done here now is I've taken um, a multi-sample, this sample here, dropped it into a simpler, set it up so that my first sample has, is right here. I deleted the original low sample. I found it was kind of useless. And I've just kind of repeated the process by duplicating the chains and changing the simplers to have different uh, samples selected. And then I've played around with the key range inside the instrument rack and as, as well as the transpose on each of the different simplers so that the notes fit properly and now I've got an instrument that I can play with my uh, Prophet 6 synthesizer and it sounds pretty nice so that's a way you can kind of get the functionality of sampler which allows multiple samples inside a simpler so I hope you found this useful. I'm going to put this instrument rack up for download. And if you like the sound of the Prophet instruments, I would uh, encourage you to check out my Prophets of Doom Ableton Live Pack, which is a whole bunch of instruments I made using Prophet samples. So thanks a lot. It's Afro DJ Mac. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and um, have fun. Take care.